Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. Let's talk about an eye in the sky. It's the Helix Nebula. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Well, welcome to my channel. This is Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. And to, to, first things first, I want to let you know, I finally got my official NASA hat, thanks to Joe Navarro, Glenn Clowder. You all say you can't be an astrophotographer without a NASA hat. So I have my NASA cap on right now, so you guys beware. Anyway, the uh, telescope I'm going to be using tonight is Old Faithful, the uh, Orion Eon triplet 130 millimeter refractor. It is a fantastic telescope and I have the 8x, uh, 0.8x reducer on it as well. And this gives me a nice wide f.5.6 field of view and with that I'm going to be pointing over in the southern sky. Now I have some issues with that over at my location here in my backyard. There's a lot of trees and a big holly tree obstructing the view until about 10 o'clock or 9.30 at night when the Helix Nebula comes into view. It's very low on the horizon to begin with and it's going to be skimming just to the uh, above those trees off to my south and to my southwest. So it's going to be a challenge to get that. Now the camera that I'm going to be using is the ZWO ASI 1600mm Pro. I'm going to have it set at uh, center temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius and I'm going to be using the red, green, and blue filters. Plus, since I want to get some more of that red nebulosity within the Helix Nebula, I'm also going to add the uh, hydrogen alpha, a 7 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter into the uh, collection of the three other filters, RGB. And with that, I'll be processing, hopefully getting some good data on the Helix Nebula. This, the, this has taken me several nights and I finally got a, enough data now to present a somewhat decent picture. Well, that's coming at the end. I'm going to show you how I process these, how I set it up in Nina, and the final results. So stick around. Okay, as we put the uh, sky into motion, there we go into sunset right now. It's moon, Saturn, and Jupiter are, will be appearing in the southern sky. And if you know the position of the uh, planets, Saturn and Jupiter, you can get a pretty good idea where the Helix Nebula is. It's just a little bit south of Jupiter. So if you're in a northern latitude, this is going to be very low on the horizon. Here in Savannah, it's about 37 degrees above the southern horizon at Zenith. So it's not very high. And if you go 20 degrees further northward, that puts you at uh, 52 degrees, somewhere around the London area, I think is about 52, Dublin, 52 degrees north latitude. Uh, that's going to put it down to only 17 degrees above the horizon. This planetary nebula is sometimes called the Eye of God and is quite close to us being only about 665 light years away. It is the result of a star near the end of its life and with its outer shell being blown outward with the inner resulting star shrinking down to what is known as a white dwarf. A white dwarf, by the way, is an extremely compressed area of matter, so dense that it would be as if the mass of our sun would be compressed down to the size of the Earth. The observed glow of the central star in the Helix Nebula is so energetic that it causes the previously expelled gases to brightly shine. So let's begin by opening uh, Nina. Here we go. This is Nina 11.1. And it's the beta version, but it's it's very good. I highly recommend it. It's nightly build now 160, 160. Here we go. Let's load the profile. And since the profile is loaded, let's connect all. Yes, okay. What we're doing now is co uh, connecting all the devices. So the guider is connected, the focuser connected, telescope connected, filter wheel and all the cameras, everything is connected. All right, let's go to uh, Sky Atlas. Let's go to the Helix Nebula. All you have to do is type in Helix. Uh, I think there's a galaxy out there too. But anyway, but I want this one here. And here's my personal skyline here, which you can add into Nina. And I'll be showing you how to do that in another video. But uh, right now, this is the big holly tree that's just to the south-southeast of the scope. 
and the uh, nebula has just cleared that so now we're good to go so let's uh, set for framing and it's going to load in the picture here and that's exactly what I want and this little flare right here this is some sort of shock wave or something uh, I, I want to pick that up so that's in the red and the um, hydrogen alpha red will pick that up so I'm going to be using a lot of hydrogen alpha along with the red green and blue so let's go into uh, slew and center Nina is going to plate solve and um, zero in on the nebula itself the target in question taking a six second exposure and let's go over into here imaging and you know on the first time it got it pretty close look at that right there um, it's off just a little bit I think it wants to put it right here so it's it's fine-tuning it right now um, the um, mount is settling I give it a 10 second settle time you can you can change that to ever whatever time frame you want uh, taking my six second exposure that yeah, I was right yeah, they put it right in the center there it is so now it's ready to go um, this will close out itself now next thing I can do which is always a good thing to do is uh, go ahead and start an autofocus so I'm going to I'm going to do an autofocus here and the autofocus is instructed to put the luminance filter on to do the uh, initial autofocus and then it'll autofocus on each different filter change so let's see here I think it's on filter take that back it says it's on the red filter that's okay while it's doing that it's going to cool down the camera I'm going to show you how I process the helix nebula from the last several nights let's see if I got that red shock wave coming out okay all right so let's take a look at the uh, products and here's the red filter and then the green filter looks a little dimmer as you would expect with the greener light and the blue filter a little bit more blue so you're going to see a lot of blues and a lot of red in the final picture and we can take these three images right here and combine them together uh, channel combination I got the red the green and the blue and put them all together and you get something like this uh, at first and then uh, processed a little bit uh, you can't see much of that area that I was looking for right here that out wave shock wave whatever you want to call it uh, that's moving away from the core itself so let's take a look at the um, uh, hydrogen alpha data there you see a little bit more of it right there versus the red itself see the red you don't have anything there at all and the hydrogen alpha you do have a little bit of that what about a combination of the two um, I added the two together so you get a lot more brightness in the actual core and you still have that shock wave moving outward and you can see also if you look closely a little bit more in this area too uh, in the reds so let's combine those and see what we got and uh, this one is just HA green and blue so uh, you can barely see it right there in this on process picture here the uh, combination of the hydrogen alpha and the red together uh, and then the green and blue uh, give me this image here so you know they, they look okay but it's uh, you know, I have a lot more processing to do on that so once I finished here in PixInsight I usually take it over to Photoshop and uh, let's see what I got here um, this is just another uh, view from the uh, PixInsight processing here so let's go away from that again uh, a little bit more in the Pixon site I'm trying to get this area right here to uh, come up and also there is some area right here I'm looking for so let's go into uh, the Photoshop uh, final processing here I think I have uh, this is the uh, uh, just the um, nebulosity by using the uh, star net uh, reduction of the stars uh, to get nebula only 
So I was working with that in Photoshop. And then the final product here after playing around in Photoshop is the eye of God. Doesn't it look like an eye looking back at you? And there I did, I was able to pick up that uh, shock wave that's moving outward and I can pick up a little bit of nebulosity uh, over here as well. This is kind of vivid, so I toned it down just a little bit, and I think that looks more realistic there. I don't know which one you like better, this one or this one. Uh, this one shows more of that outer shock wave. Even you can see some over here as well. So, again, one, that's two, or one. I kind of like one. Well, thanks for watching. Well, there it is. It's rather eerie looking, like a big eye looking back at you. Some people call it the eye of God. Nonetheless, uh, I have other projects uh, I'm working on right now. I'm working on the uh, Silver Sliver uh, Galaxy, and I'm also working in time for Halloween, the Ghost Nebula. Those will be coming up probably with some shorts or some short videos uh, on YouTube uh, coming up shortly. So stay tuned for those. But remember, the heavens are just filled with majestic glories, and they're all in a sky near you. So look up and get your telescopes if you have them and enjoy the heavenly skies around. Unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.